the message today. We shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 7. John 7. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast, and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil, who goeth about to kill thee? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, but the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him, and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this, that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come? In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night being one of them. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. May God help us to be doers of the word.
you can take anymore. Jess says you'll never reach the shore. God says you're going to make it.
If you're expecting something, I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Revival time. Miracle time. Power time. And it's coming upon your life. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you are going to do wonders in every life today. Your promises are yes and amen. And we know that you are going to fulfill your promises. Lord, we pray you open the windows of heaven. Pour down your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. Nobody will go back home empty-handed. Feel every vessel. Touch every life. Heal every sickness. Deliver the oppressed. Do wonders in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That she be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hear the Spirit of the Lord through the apostles counseling us, commanding us, directing us, and instructing us that in prayer we should not be slothful. In seeking the face of the Lord, we should not be slothful. We should not be following the path of ease and the path of relaxation. It says we should be up and doing. There's a God in heaven who answers prayer. And it says we must not be slothful in prayer. There is a God in heaven who looks at us as we grip, as we grab, as we take hold of the promises of the Lord. And he says, we should not be laid back, idle, indolent, be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He says, look at the record, look at the history of the dealings of God with man. And you're going to find there have been men and women of like passions as we are. They held on to the promises of God and they overcame. He said, look at the examples and be followers of them. Those who are the people that through faith and through patience inherited the promises. Tonight, we're looking at inheriting the promises by faith. Inheriting the promises by faith. We come to Romans chapter 4. Reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope, believed in hope. It's giving us records. It's giving us the history. It's giving us the background of men and women that held on to God. And it's challenging you and challenging me, challenging us. That we must not be slothful, idle, lazy, cold, lukewarm. We should get up and challenge every problem that we have. Even when it appears to be hopeless. Because it gives us examples of those who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not a somebody now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. It says, as we come to prayer, and we're expecting a great miracle from the Lord, we should not look at what we can feel, what we can see, or the way we have been, our physical condition, our deplorable condition, our hopeless condition, 
or whatever might be happening around us. He gives us the example of Abraham. He was not weak in faith. He considered not his body dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The servant believed in their hearts, they staggered. Like drunken people at the promises of God. How can that be? Can that happen? Will that miracle take place? There have been lots of questions. There are no questions tonight. God is going to answer your prayer. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. Strong in faith. Strong in faith. You'll be strong in faith in Jesus' name. What did he do? As he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and be fully persuaded. You must be persuaded in your heart. Our God cannot fail. His promises cannot fail. His power cannot fail. And be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Our God is able tonight. I said your God is able tonight. Able to save. Able to heal. Able to deliver. Able to destroy all the works of the devil. Look at this, verse 22. And therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Verse 23. Not now. It was not written for his sake alone. But it was imputed that it was imputed unto him. But for us also. But for me also. But for me also. This example is written for you. The example of Abraham. That as Abraham was strong in faith, tonight you are going to be strong in faith. As he staggered not with unbelief, tonight you will not stagger with unbelief in Jesus' name. He was fully persuaded. And tonight you are fully persuaded. If there's only one miracle remaining in heaven to dish down to people, you are the candidate, you are going to have it tonight. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered by our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. We come to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Hebrews 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. You see that? It says tonight, as we come to God, as we pray to God, as we claim the promises of God, we draw near with a true heart, with assurance of faith. There's assurance tonight, miracles are going to take place. Assurance tonight is going to do the impossible. Assurance tonight is going to move every mountain. It says in that verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast. You have a promise? Let us hold fast. You have expectation? Let us hold fast. You are asking for something in prayer tonight? Let us hold fast. You are believing against hope, having hope? Let us hold fast. You know that this mountain in front of you will move tonight. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. There are so many promises from God. In fact, the promises are as many as the needs of all men. Whatever your needs are tonight, there is a promise that's appropriate for the problem you have. And that promise is coming to your life. 
and the Lord is going to roll the problems away in Jesus' name. The promises are as firm as the, as the faithfulness of God. These promises are as fresh as when they were first proclaimed by the Lord because he is eternal because it's always there and whatever you said before in a fresh way in a new way it's still saying the same thing today the promises of God that you are going to read tonight and every promise of the word of God that you read they are always as fixed always as fresh always as dependable as when God made them for the first time there is no possibility of failure in your life there's no possibility of failure tonight in your family there's no possibility of failure tonight why number one because God is faithful he does not forget he cannot forget he cannot fail once he pronounces something and he says this will be he does not forget all the promises we're reading tonight God cannot forget God is faithful number two God is mighty there is nothing he said he will do which he now turns another and he says oh, I'm sorry I don't think I can do that I don't have the might I don't have the power never because God is mighty is mightier than all contrary forces any other force in your life any other thing in your life that fights against the fulfillment of the promise of God the mighty God will crush them tonight from your life <laughs> number three God is immutable unchangeable it's always there nothing moves him he is immovable and because of that he cannot change he will not change nothing will change the utterance or the proclamation or the pronouncement he has given out number four is eternal all earthly things are temporal and temporary everything you are going through all the challenges you are going through that just for a moment and in a few minutes everything will be cancelled out of your life in Jesus name <laughs> number five God is omnipresent is there with you is there by your side and you cannot say I'm looking for him nothing escapes his notice he notices you there he sees you there he sees the problem there he knows the magnitude of the problem and he knows how long the problem has been he is omnipresent not only that is omniscient he knows the solution to your problem and he's bringing that solution tonight i said he's bringing that solution tonight he will not come late it's going to be on time and tonight, the moment you mention the name of Jesus, it is done in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number seven is omnipotent. None like him in power. None like him in authority. Whatever you said he will do, he will do. And tonight is that night. Tonight is my night. I said tonight is my night. Whatever needs to be shaken out of your life, tonight is done. Whatever needs to be moved out of your life, tonight it is done. Whatever needs to be impacted into your life, tonight it is done. You are going to inherit the promises by faith tonight. It will happen in Jesus' name. Three points we are looking at. Number one, the promise of total freedom in salvation the promise of total freedom in salvation you get saved and quite a lot of things come along with that salvation total freedom every yoke cancelled every cause cancelled every rope and every chain that ties you and binds you everything broken 
total freedom tonight. For me. I said for me. Total freedom is salvation. Number two, the provision of fruitfulness for all saints. The provision of fruitfulness, you are going to be fruitful. Your family, you are going to be fruitful. In the work of your hand, you are going to be fruitful. In your profession, you are going to be fruitful. In soul winning, you are going to be fruitful. Every form of barrenness, spiritual, barrenness, physical, barrenness, finance, barrenness, food to eat, barrenness, joblessness. Every form of barrenness is taken away from your life in Jesus' name. The provision of fruitfulness for all saints. Number three, the prophecy of fullness with the spirit. The prophecy of fullness with the spirit. Come to number one. What do you have in number one? What's your possession in number one? What's the expectation from number one? The promise of total freedom is salvation. The freedom we're talking about has three branches. Number one, freedom from all sins. Freedom from all sins. The devil thought he could keep you in that sin. The devil has failed. Number two, freedom from all sicknesses. Every form of sickness is canceled tonight. Anything you have been carrying in your body and you have been trying to shake it up, get it up, tonight it's going. Freedom from all sicknesses. Number three, freedom from all afflictions of Satan. Congratulations, you are free. Look at John, number one, freedom. From all seas, you are free. I said you are free. John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Hey, can, can you see that? Do you understand that verse? Look at that verse again. As he spake these words, many believed on him. What does that mean? Look at it. It's not after he spoke these words. No. When he finished speaking these words. No. As he spoke. The message was still going on in their heart. They believed. While the message is going on tonight and you are telling yourself I believe that. I believe that. I said I believe that. The work will begin. I believe that the miracle will begin. I believe that those blind eyes will be getting opened. I believe that strength will come to a weak body. Look at that verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews, we believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You are going to continue. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Make you free. Look up here for a moment. You see, people are thinking of my strength will make me free. My energy will make me free. My struggling will make me free. My endeavor will make me free. They're looking for something coming from the inside of them to make them free. The truth is coming from Christ. And the truth is coming from outside. It's not what you feel. It's not what you're seeing. 
It is not your struggle. It is not your power. The truth you are hearing will set you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Thank God your freedom has come. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, verse 7. Romans chapter 6, verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. What does that mean? He that is dead, you say, but I'm still alive. You need to understand. When Christ was crucified, it was for you. When Christ died, it was for you. When he was buried, it was for you. And when he rose from the dead, that was for me. And he says, you are identified with Christ. Come to the side of Christ. He was crucified for me. He died for me. He was buried for me. He rose again for me. I am dead with him. My old nature is dead with him. And he says, look at the consequence of that. For he that is dead is free from sin. Am I free tonight? I'm talking about you. I said, am I free tonight? Are you free tonight? Thank God you're free. Every chain of sin that bound you, you're free in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. But now, but now, today, today. But now, I said today, today, be made free from sin, you became uh, the servants of God. Number one, we're free from all sins. I am free. Number two, we're free from all sicknesses. Free from all sicknesses. Look up here. When something is attached to you and is following you about, and it's tied to you. And you feel the heavy weight. All of a sudden, somebody comes. And it breaks the cord. The association. The affiliation. And takes away that thing from you. The load is gone. You'll feel light. You'll feel free. And that is what Christ has come to do against your sickness tonight. You've been dragging it about. You've been pulling it about. And you have been saying, Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched woman that I am. This sin is going to kill me. No, this sin cannot kill you. You've come to the presence of Christ. And you have come to the very foot of Calvary. You are free from all sicknesses tonight. In Jesus' name. It's been there for years. You're free. You've been trying to tolerate it. You're free. You've been trying to endure it. You're free. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. And when the evening was calm, like tonight, this is your evening. Evening of miracle. Evening of deliverance. Evening of freedom. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many people? Are you in that number? And he healed, I said, how many people? Your name is there. And he healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet himself, not an angel, himself, 
not a man. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He'll carry them away. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. In verse 1, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal what? All manner of sickness and what? All manner of disease. And he said in verse 8, heal the sick. And if you, are, if you are there tonight, you are sick. It's not, it's not you that is going to say, I'm not strong enough. Oh, you, you will be healed tonight. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to be healed tonight. He gave the command. He gave the commission. Heal the sick. And he gave his name. And when we mention that name tonight, your sicknesses are gone. Yeah. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. I was waiting for you. Freely give. Are you going to pay something for the healing tonight? You are going to fast before you get the healing tonight? You are going to roll on the ground before you get the healing tonight? You need to buy some bottle of oil before you get the healing tonight? Free is coming your way. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Are there believers there tonight? I said that there are believers there tonight. These signs will follow you. As we're going back home, healing will follow you. Deliverance will follow you. Prosperity will follow you. Answer to prayer will follow you. You will not be searching and looking. Where is my healing? Where is my healing? Don't worry. It will just follow after you. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Turn to the person by your side and say, you will recover tonight. Turn to the other side, you recover tonight. Look back there, look back there. You recover tonight. Recovery has come. Healing has come. Miracle has come. Congratulations, I rejoice with you. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look at verse 20. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. There is an amen in your life. Amen in your family. It is done in Jesus' name. There is a freedom from all afflictions of Satan. Look at Luke. Luke chapter 10. We're talking about the third part now. Freedom from all the afflictions of Satan. Look at chapter 10 of Luke. And I'm reading from verse 17. And the 70 returned again of joy. Every wife will return again with joy tonight. Every husband return again with joy tonight. Every boy, every girl, you are returning back home with joy tonight. And all those who have said, I never got anything before, tonight is different. I said, tonight is different. You will return with joy. Joy of answered prayer. Joy of testimony. Joy of victory. Joy of freedom. I am free. I said I am free. 
Verse 17, and the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Before you, Satan will fall. All messengers of Satan will fall. All those who terrorize you. And they say, you will not pass this way. They will fall, you will pass that way. Verse 19, behold, I give unto you power. What do you have tonight? Weakness? Sorrow? Shame? Defeat? What do you have tonight? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over and over all the power of your enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Is that yours? Is it real tonight? Are you going to get it tonight? You're free. Yeah. Romans chapter 16. Reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 16. Verse 20. Romans chapter 16. I'm waiting for you. Chapter 16. Verse 20. Mark this in your Bible. This promise is for you. In the day, it's for you. In the night, it's for you. In the city, it's for you. In the village, it's for you. And when anybody, any power threatens you, come back to this verse, you will see the victory. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under whose feet? Under your feet next year next five years when it says and the God of peace the God of power the God of promise the God of all might the God of majesty the God of dominion the God of deliverance the God that never fails and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It is done. Point number two. The provision of fruitfulness for all saints. For how many saints? Are you part of that? Where are you? I rejoice with you. You will never know failure in your life. All the past defeat and crying and weeping, they are gone forever in Jesus' name. The provision of fruitfulness. You will be fruitful. Your marriage will be fruitful. Your studies will be profitable. Everything you lay your hand upon will prosper in Jesus' name. Fruitfulness. Somebody help me shout fruitfulness. Three things here. Number one, no more barrenness. Did you hear that? No more barrenness. Number two, no more backwardness. You know, I'm always, I'm always coming last. Uh -uh. You are now coming to the head of the queue. Backwardness cancelled in Jesus' name. Number three, no more bitterness. Bitter experience, crying. Sorrowful, dejected, wanting to commit suicide, all that is taken away. 
your future is bright. I'm looking for the person I'm talking to. I said your future is bright. One, no more barrenness. Two, no more backwardness. Three, no more bitterness. Number one, this is you. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Look at verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. In your family, you and your wife, no barrenness. Your children that are getting married, no barrenness. Any loved one close to your heart, no barrenness in Jesus' name. And the person you have the name on your prayer list. And they say, Mother in the Lord, pray for me. Daddy in the Lord, pray for me. My brother, pray for me. All those people that requested prayer from you, from this very moment, barrenness is cancelled away from them. They will not be barren in thy land. And the number of thy days I will fulfill. Somebody there is going to live long. Nothing will cut short your life. Long life. Long life. Long life. Everything that cuts short somebody's life will not even come near you. You will not be barren in Jesus' name. Psalm 113. Psalm 113. And I'm reading from verse 6. 113. Reading from verse 6. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth he raises up the poor out of the dust he has lifted you up and lifted the needy out of the dunk hill that he may search him with princes even with the princes of the people verse 9 he maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children praise the lord number one no more barrenness wipe those tears away go buy your baby materials boy girl Twin is fulfilled. Number two, no more backwardness. Failure is cancelled. Defeat is cancelled. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, it has come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God, you see your God, will set thee on high. Did you receive that? It is fulfilled. You come from the lower bottom of the queue and you come to the front of the queue. 
God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee. And overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Look at this in verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. In thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto. Every exam you take, you will pass. Every endeavor that you attempt, you'll be successful. Every plan you make is going to come through very well. Any project you start, you will finish. He says, in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, they shall be afraid of you. Evil powers will be afraid of you. Those who are hiding in darkness, when they mention your name, they will tremble. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in a season. And to bless, and to bless, no subtraction, and to bless, no removal, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Look at verse 13. I need to breathe down deep before I read verse 13 to you. You need to look at it very well before we look at verse 13. Look at this, look at this. And the Lord shall make thee the head. And not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command you this day. Number one, no barrenness. Amen. Number two, no backwardness. Look at third John. Third John. Almost the end of the New Testament. Third John. Only one chapter. Verse two. Beloved, is the beloved in the house tonight? Beloved, I say, is the beloved of heaven? Is she there tonight? Is she there tonight? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. It is done. My brother, it is done. My sister there, it is done. Yeah. Number one, no more barrenness. You accept that. No more backwardness. You accept that. Number three, no more bitterness. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 23. Exodus chapter 15. Verse 23, and when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. 
and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There's a tree at Calvary. That's where Jesus died for you. And he died to change every situation in your life. Every bitter situation in your life will become sweet from tonight in Jesus' name. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he brought them and said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that he lets thee. Bitterness is gone. Sorrow is gone. Defeat is gone. Crying is gone. All your tears are wiped away in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. I'll start with verse 15. And then I'll back up to some verses. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15. Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, bitterness. Rachel, weeping for children, refused to be comforted for children because they were not. That's the bitter water of experience. But now come to verse 11. The Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Any sin stronger than yourself that are beholding you down, making your life bitter, they are knocked off tonight. Look at verse 14. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Look at verse 16. Thus says the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping. And thine eyes from tears. For thy work is shall be rewarded your labor shall be rewarded your endeavor shall be rewarded your aspirations will be rewarded says the Lord and they shall come from the land of the enemy you release your blessings that the sitting on your promotion the place of God they're sitting on it will release unto you your right they're sitting on will be released unto you. And there is hope in thine end. Things will not end with bitterness. Will not end with tears. Will not end with sorrow. There is hope in thine end. Says the Lord that thy children shall come again to thine own border. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Is Ephraim, my dear son, is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. God remembers you. He remembers your tears. Even if he had corrected you and rebuked you, he said, since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. Therefore, my powers are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him. Mercy has come for you. Deliverance has come for you. Fruitfulness in your life, in Jesus' name. 
Point number three, the prophecy of fullness with the Spirit. The prophecy of fullness with the Spirit. Look at the prophecy. We're looking at Joel. In Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Reading from verse 12. Therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Multiply grace coming to you tonight. Manifold mercy coming to you tonight. Slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Look at verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, yes, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you a corn and wine. And ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Verse 21, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Who is that talking to? Be glad and rejoice. Tears are wiped away. Sorrow is gone. And all the fear, everything is gone. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field. For the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree bears her fruit. You are bearing fruit. The fig tree. And the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And it will cause to come down for you. The rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The floors shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25. Verse 25. Verse 25. When will this be done? For who is this going to be done? You will rejoice over your family. You rejoice your place of work. Restoration has come. Total restoration. Full restoration. And it says in verse 25, And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my gate army, which I send among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt. How is God dealing with you tonight? I said, How is God going to deal with you tonight? That has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God, and on else, and my people once again shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass. It's coming to pass tonight. On you, it's coming to pass tonight. In your family, it's coming to pass tonight. Among our leaders and workers and members and invitees, it's coming to pass tonight. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will, I will, I will pour, I will pour, I will pour, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. There's an outpouring here tonight. Outpouring of power. Outpouring of anointing. Outpouring of unction. Outpouring of answered prayer. Outpouring of satisfaction. They were looking at Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 in verse 39. Acts chapter 2 verse 39. For the promise is unto you. What is it? What is she there? Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Tonight is your night. This promise will follow after you will come upon you and will overshadow you for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off how many of those who are far off all that are far off i said how many of those that are far off all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call he has called you into blessing and that blessing is yours tonight you are going to take the victory home. You are going to take the power home. Look at, look at chapter 8, chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 5. Chapter 8 of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You'll see miracle tonight. For unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many that were taken with pulses and that were lame, they were healed. Verse 8. Read it yourself. Verse 8. Verse 8. Shout it out, one, two, three, go. Because there is an outpouring. I say there's an outpouring. And that outpouring is coming upon your life. Because of that fullness, and where the fullness of the Spirit is, there is power unlimited. Power unlimited. Tonight, that power is coming your way. That power is touching you there tonight. Number two, there is peace undisturbed. Peace will come to your heart tonight. All the commotion will vanish away. All the restlessness will vanish away. All the guilt will vanish away. There is peace undisturbed. Number three, there is purity undeniable. Purity undeniable. Tonight is that night that the Lord is going to bring the purity in every heart in Jesus' name. Number four, there's partnership unrestricted. Partnership with Christ. Partnership with the Almighty God. And there's no restriction to that partnership. As that partnership comes to you tonight, something great is going to happen. And something wonderful is going to happen. Number five, there is prayer undeniable undeniable tonight you will not be denied i will not be denied we mention the name of jesus and we talk against the mountain and the, the fullness of the spirit of god here tonight there is prayer undeniable number six there are promises of failing every promise he has made every promise he has made there is no failure tonight because there are promises of failing number seven there is protection unassailable. Protection unassailable. A protection that comes to you tonight. That the Lord says, it will surround you with a wall of fire. I said, it will surround you with a wall of fire. And every evil thing that wanted to penetrate, the fire will burn them up in Jesus' name. Power unlimited. Peace undisturbed purity 
undeniable, partnership, unrestricted, prayer, undeniable, promises, unfailing, protection, unassailable, provision, unquantifiable. Provision, provision is flowing into your life flowing into your family and is flowing into your business tonight in Jesus name number nine prosperity unprecedented a kind of prosperity you never saw before tonight is going to come upon your life in Jesus name number ten progress unhindered nobody will hinder your progress again enemies clear out of the way all enemies clear out of his way clear out of her way because from tonight progress unhindered in jesus name look at this look at this tonight there's promotion unstoppable promotion unstoppable and after god has given you all these things and then at last Number 12, there's going to be paradise unending. I will get there. I said I will get there. I said I will get there. You will get there in Jesus' name. Tonight, the fullness of the Spirit. Tonight, the outpouring of the Spirit. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 8. And Philip, full of faith and of power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. That power is transferred unto you. That power is given unto you tonight. And it shall be in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 24. Acts chapter 11, verse 24. It says in Acts 11, verse 24, it says over here, for it was a good man. Grace has come to his life. It was a good man. Somebody there, grace is flowing into your life. The mercy of God is flowing into your life. Forgiveness is flowing into your life. Freedom is flowing into your life. Good man. Good man. Good woman. What are you? The Lord make you good without any contradiction in Jesus' name. I'm full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Addition has come. Addition has come supernatural in every one of your lives in jesus name now you are ready miracle you are ready freedom you are ready salvation you are ready answers to your prayer you are ready tonight john chapter 15 john chapter 15 i'm reading here from verse 16 ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you. I am chosen tonight. I said I am chosen tonight. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit shall remain. And that whatsoever. Who is that? And whatsoever. Who is this talking about? And that whatsoever. Ye shall ask. In my name, as the Father in my name, He will give it to you. Yeah. I, receive. I receive. I said, I receive. receive. You have it in Jesus' name. Yeah. John chapter 16, verse 23. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day, He shall ask me nothing. Very late, very late. Certainly, certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, whatsoever, whatsoever, are you ready to pray? Whatsoever, are you sure it's going to answer you? Whatsoever, 
Are you sure you are going to have the fullness tonight and whatsoever? Are you sure of your healing tonight and whatsoever? Are you sure of your deliverance tonight and whatsoever, whatsoever? You shall ask the Father in my name, complete it yourself. Complete it yourself. Say that again with assurance. He will give it to you. Your prayer is answered already. You are going to praise God tonight. You are going to rejoice tonight. Because whatsoever, 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 you will ask tonight, you have got it. Your miracle is confirmed. Your healing is confirmed. The outpouring is confirmed. Rise up and take it. Rise up and take it. Rise up and take it. It's yours. It's yours. There's no doubt tonight. There's no doubt tonight. Freedom. Open your mouth. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Open your mouth. There's assurance tonight. There's senses to prayer tonight. Freedom from sin available tonight. Freedom from sickness available tonight. Freedom from all satanic affliction available tonight. There's assurance here tonight. Prayers have been answered. There's assurance here tonight. Sicknesses are moving away. There's assurance here tonight. All those sins are cancelled and forgiven. There's assurance here tonight. Satanic afflictions are driven away. You're free. You are free. Free. Since the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Free your soul. Free your spirit. Free your mind. Free your Christian life. Free your home. Free from all powers of darkness. Free from every problem that has been chasing you. Free. You're free. You're free. It's confirmed. You're free. It's confirmed. You're carrying that freedom back home. Deliverance, you're carrying that back home. Dominion, you're carrying that back home. The joy of answered prayer, you're carrying that back home. Victory over sin. Victory over sickness. Victory over Satan. That's yours. No doubt about it. You're free. That mountain will move away. That harassment of the enemy will move away. That bondage will be broken tonight. Yokes broken tonight. Curse taken away tonight. It's gone. It has come to pass. It has come to pass. No barrenness that's cancelled. No backwardness that's cancelled. No bitterness that's cancelled. In Jesus' name we pray. I have got my miracle. In Jesus' name we pray. I am delivered. I am set free. I am free. I am full. I am fruitful. My mountains are gone. In Jesus' name we pray. Your answer has come from heaven. Your miracle has come from heaven. 
that miracle will follow you home. Healing will follow you home. Deliverance will follow you home. Power will follow you home. The anointing that breaks every yoke will follow you home. Assurance, assurance, assurance will follow you home. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more backwardness. No more bitterness. I got it. I got it. What is he? What is she? Rest up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name. You are the God that cannot fail. The God of all power. The God of all majesty. The God of all dominion. Your people one by one. Every brother, every sister. Every boy, every girl. They have each called upon you. And tonight, there's assurance of answered prayer. Confirm it in Jesus' name. All those who have been battling with one sin or the other, set them free. Set them free. From every struggle, set them free. From falling and rising, set them free. From doubts about their salvation, set them free. Let the spirit of the living God bear witness with every heart now. Your sins are forgiven. The peace of God has come. And victory has come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, no sickness will follow any of your children back home. Mountain of sickness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, the Lord is touching your body right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every power of darkness, power of Satan, occultism, militating against, against your life, I cancel that in Jesus' name. Lord, bring everything in under their feet. March on them. March on them. I'm talking to you. March on them. On your problem, march on them. On those evil spirits, march on them. On the powers that torment you, march on them. You have the victory in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray. Every backwardness, you turn to forwardness. Barrenness to fruitfulness. Bitterness to sweet in Jesus' name. Wipe all their tears away. Take all the sorrows away. Set them free. This is my brother here. Set him free. This my sister there. Set her free. And I pray, Lord, all the bitterness of the past, sorrow of the past, heartache of the past, regrets of the past, crying of the past, wipe everything away in Jesus' name. Fulfillment in every life. Joy in every life. Answer in every life. Miracle in every life. There's testimony in your mouth now. There's testimony in your mouth now. There is testimony in your mouth now. Lord, confirm it in every life. I thank you because I know it is done. It is done. It is done. And that amen will never stop in your life. Joy will never stop in your life. Hallelujah will never stop in your life. And clapping will never stop in your life. Power for you, in you, above you, 
and out of you, you will never fail or falter. A confirmation in your life. Assurance in your life. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray.